Welcome to Business Casual, where entrepreneurs find inspiration to start and grow their online business. Today, I'm talking with Maho and David, the owners of On The Road Media, a media production company that's sometimes based in Argentina and is almost always on the road telling cinematic stories about inspiring people and the initiatives that create solutions for their communities. Their work has been featured on major outlets such as NBC, Discovery, and AJ. We'll be discussing how to create a company based around your passion and how to pitch stories to huge brands. Welcome, Maho and David. Well, thank you, Heather, for having us. It's great. (laughs) Yeah, it's nice to be talking to you. All right. Can you give us a quick elevator pitch of what On The Road Media does? We are a video production company and uh, we specialize on cinematic stories about inspiring people and initiatives that uh, try to create positive change um, in and for their communities. Um, Our clients are media outlets like AJ Plus or NBC and also organizations that could be local NGOs or also the UN, for example. And recently, we started collaborating more with brands, for example, social enterprises, uh, to help spread their message. Now, you've worked with NGOs, non-governmental organizations, and large organizations like the UN. How have you gone about landing those kinds of clients and projects? We use a platform called Story Hunter that is specifically for freelancers. Uh, So it connects freelancers to um, content creators or to, to companies who are looking to create videos. Um, so that's one way that we know that somebody's uh, looking for pitches because they post an assignment and you can pitch to them. Um, another one is simply to find the media outlet that you are interested in working with and simply they will have some section in which it says whether they are accepting pitches or not and then you can pitch to them. I think that one is a little bit more difficult probably because they will most likely get a lot of <laughs> pitches or a lot of mail and it's I think it's less likely that you will be able to connect with them that way. Also personal contacts. I mean, we just, I, you know, if I'm really interested in working with a media outlet, I might just reach out to their producer. So how do you actually decide what stories you want to tell? Like what's the process of pitching an idea to a media company? If we talk about media outlets, it starts usually with a often long research. So you're coming from a topic, let's say you're passionate about, you want to tell a story about women's rights together with uh, indigenous peoples in Guatemala or in southern Mexico. So you start your research, you read a lot, you try to get contacts, you learn about the story. And then, of course, what you need in order to make it a story, a visual story, is to find a great character or find great characters that can lead the story and that can carry a story. And once you have that, and that can take a long time, and sometimes it's, you know, sometimes reading an article where you say, well, that person would be perfect. Sometimes it's through meetings. Um, Sometimes it's just luck, frankly. And so once you have that and you feel like now you have a story, then you write a pitch and send it to the contacts. Um, at the news outlets. Of course, we think about the news outlet right from the start because every news outlet, they have their own style, they have their own look, feeling, so you want to make sure uh, the story fits. And the pitch actually, in the end, even if it took you a month of research, the pitch is only a few sentences um, because that's all they want, the media outlets, um, to decide whether it's good or not. And actually, we found that if you're not able to um, tell what the story is about in a few sentences, sentences, then most likely you need to dig, a, dig deeper first. Yeah, most likely you don't know what the story is yourself. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so it's, it's actually good that they make you do it in, what is it, like 400 words or something like that? I think, yeah, it's it depends, but 400 words, yeah. more or less. And also because I think producers get a lot of pitches, so they don't want to waste time reading one page. They need yeah. something that is very clear. So I think, yeah, pitching, like one of the main things is that you know how to attract the attention and uh, be really precise in just 
a, you know, a few paragraphs. And do you think that companies will need to get more sophisticated with their video content? Um, yeah, definitely. I think, um, as like I was saying, as, as this user content grows more and more, um, the brands will need to to have a message that also that is different and also that is a little bit in line with that because one thing that is really interesting about this user content is that you know you see Instagram stories and mostly they are very like they make you feel very close to the person very uh, authentic like very connected and I think that's why a lot of people like to see it and when you see a very well produced perfect video sometimes it's like yeah okay that just looks like an ad today we already see many videos that look great on Facebook you know it's like drone videos and with stabilized footage and stuff but many of those videos um, are not so good when it comes to story. So I think um, telling a great story will always be the one thing that will work, no matter the platform, no matter the technique, no matter if it's vertical or horizontal, but actually telling a great story. And for us as filmmakers, and considering what Maho mentioned, that people will create more and more content with their own cell phones, um, I think that's our niche. I mean, create good looking cinematic footage, but always with a great story uh, at heart. Now, I know you work with a lot of freelancers, like animators or editors. What's your strategy for finding good people online? So I think mostly what we're looking for, I would say, is two things. Uh, when we hire someone or when we look for a freelancer to collaborate with, um, one would be that their style of their work it goes with ours, even if it's something that is completely different to what we do, like if it's a graphic designer or an animator or um, a composer, I don't know, but it still needs to be similar or in, in sync or in line with what we do with our style. Like, I think we need to feel some kind of connection to their work uh, first. And then secondly, I would say, um, well, obviously we will either meet in person or Skype or contact this person in some way. Um, so I would say we would also need to feel some connection to them when when we talk and when we communicate to feel like we're on the same page. Also, one important lesson for us is that we are we are good at making video, as Maho mentioned, not at running a company, at graphic design or audio post editing or something. So I think ideally we would focus on just producing great films for our clients, media outlets, NGOs, and somebody else or several other people take care of stuff that we're not so good at. Um, that might be a mistake that some creatives make, that after a while they try to replace themselves, but I'd rather have somebody do what I'm not good at than have somebody do what I'm actually good at. <laughs> And then you have to take care of the business side. Yeah, which I'm not yeah, good which at. Which we're not good yeah. at. <laughs> so let's say somebody is watching right now who wants to get into this field. What outline would you give them to start building this kind of career? Well, that's a great question, Heather. Um, I'd say there are two ingredients. That's portfolio and contacts. So start by creating a portfolio um, for the specific service that you want to offer. Um, like we said, we focus on stories about people that bring solutions to their communities. Think about what you want to uh, offer, what service, what product you want to offer. And be rather specific, you know, don't create a portfolio with just everything that you photographed or shot. Um, and then the second ingredient is contacts. Um, and I think you should start early on. Um, contacting potential clients, experts in the sector you're interested in. Um, so, for example, for us now that we want to get into social enterprises, like working with social enterprises, um, I just wrote people in the sector and asked for a Skype call, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and there I'd ask a couple of questions and get the expertise. And so we've learned a lot about that sector and um, actually several of the contact contacts mentioned that they, they'd love to work with us in the future because they also liked what we do. And as I'm sure you've mentioned, Heather, that's a technique from uh, Ramit. 
Um, he teaches this, and I, I saw it in, a, in an interview with the photographer Chase Chavez, and I loved it. I said, well, this is so easy. Um, and uh, actually, instead of trying to sell things, you just ask a couple of questions, um, understand the challenges they, your potential client has, um, develop uh, relationships, and see what solutions you might be able to offer. And I think that's a great way also for us as creatives that we are, might not be so used to like sell things and it always feels like a little strange for us. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, in short, work on a portfolio, make it specific and build relationships that are relevant. Yeah, and I think also it's a good idea if you're starting out and even if you're not starting out to, um, to also do the work that you want to do like your ideal work um, because sometimes uh, even if it wasn't a, a work you did for a client uh, if it's a video for example that really shows what you want to do in the future and it came out really well then that could help you to get clients uh, to do that kind of work so yeah if you're starting out you can do that kind of thing um, and collaborate with others and do your ideal work and then even if you're not starting out and you're already been doing it for a few years and maybe you realize you want to change direction you can start doing something more in line with what you want to do in the future just to have you know that kind of work to show to potential clients yeah definitely and be passionate uh, create a portfolio as Macho mentioned create a portfolio around the work you'd love to do don't be too analytical. I mean, because it will be hard anyway. So better choose a topic and a style that you actually love and that will also give you the energy um, to do that kind of work. Amazing insights. Maho and David, thank you so much for being here today. It was great talking to you. Thank you, Heather. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe and then go watch more of our content. Okay, now click.